Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a Cinema 4D R18 video on one of the coolest features, the Voronoi Fracture. With the Voronoi Fracture, you can break apart 3D objects into fractured pieces in C4D R18 with no plugins needed. That's right, it's built right into Cinema 4D. It's really easy to set up and fun to use, and once you have it all set up, you can use MoGraph effectors to disperse, displace, and animate the fractured pieces like you see in these still rendered and animated examples. There's a lot you can do with it, and it's one of my favorite new features of Cinema 4D R18, so let's jump in and go over how it all works. And let's get started with this basic setup where we just have this cube animating, and the pieces are being fractured using the new Veroni Fracture and then they're being animated and displaced using effectors. So I'm just gonna take this cube out and delete everything except that. So we just have our standard cube. There's no additional segments or anything different set up. And to get this started, I'm just going to go to MoGraph and this is where it's found. And we're gonna go to Fracture Veroni and I'll grab that or I can hold Alt or Option while hovering it when I have the cube selected and it's gonna automatically drop that in. And I'll turn back on my display lines by pressing N, B. And we can see that it's broken this into pieces and we get this multicolored display, which is our default settings. And this is just a preview. So if we do a quick Alt R, it's not gonna render those colors. That's just for you to understand. And we can see that this first checkbox is this colorized fragments. So if we turn that off, we just see our pieces. But again, if we render this, all the pieces meet seamlessly, and even when it's not broken apart, we don't see any cracks. And that's a really big deal. If we turn off our lines, we don't see anything, then we can turn them back on. So now we want to get to adjusting this, going over how we can manipulate it and break these apart. Well, if we go to sources and click this point generator, this is how they're being broken apart. So we can customize this a lot, right? Now it's just this default 20 points, so we get 20 pieces on uniform. And if we wanted it to break apart in a different way, if we did normal, they're all gonna bunch up at the center and we can change the deviation. We could do inverse normal, so they'll all go to the edges or exponential where they all kind of build up. And you can see the preview of how the pieces are breaking with those little green dots. I'm just gonna go to uniform. And then there's these transform tools. Now this isn't transforming the individual pieces. This is actually the whole system of breaking them apart. So if we wanted to kind of just adjust this whole system or rotate it, scale it, we could manipulate them that way. And if we want to turn up the pieces, we can turn the point amount up. And this is the big one that we're going to probably be using a lot because sometimes you want a lot of pieces, maybe hundreds or even thousands. If there's a big scene where you have something crumbling and you want to really break apart and do a lot of pieces, let's just go up to 500 and we'll have those pieces. Now, of course, like most things like effectors and MoGraph, in Cinema 4D, if we want to change that random seed, we can adjust that and we're gonna get our different calculation. Now, if we go to transform, this is gonna adjust the pieces. And this is similar to what a cloner would have set up if we wanna move all of the pieces out of where the object is sitting, as well as just rotate them all individually a little just to see what's happening. But that's more of just controlling the entire thing. We would wanna Go to this next tab and similar to cloners we can use effectors to animate this and this is what's really powerful and where you can really drive a lot of animation if we just wanted to get kind of a basic explosion we could go to mograph effector and we'll just get a random effector and just like if you had a cloner object with a bunch of objects by default it's going to randomly move their position x y and z and we could turn on rotation and randomly rotate them x y and Z and now it looks similar to if we just had a cloner object with a bunch of rocks or pieces. But the cool thing is when we animate the strength from zero to a hundred, it's going to snap back together. So if we had something and we just wanted it to all of a sudden explode, we could have this one random effector with a strength of zero and then just go ahead in time, turn that strength up to a hundred, check that on. And there, really quickly, we have a fractured object that's going to burst out and break. And again, the nice thing is maybe if we wanted this to be delayed in our scene, so we don't want it to happen until, say, 10 frames, we can move both of those keyframes. And until it's animating, if we do a quick render, you don't see any of the cracks. So this is a big thing alone just for doing this type of animation because you don't have to have multiple objects of when they're fractured and not fractured. You can just have them animating when they need to and when they're all meeting 
at the original point, it's going to be completely seamless. Now, since this is just a MoGraph object like a clone or a regular fracture, we could keep adding effectors, which is where this gets really cool. We could add a delay and change it to spring. And now let's see the animation that we get. We get kind of a springiness and let's turn that up a lot and extend our timeline a little bit. And that's the idea of here. We could use any effectors that we're already used to using. Let's just put that strength at like hundred and see what happens. And then we're going to get our same animation. Let's delete these two effectors and get back to some of these customization settings. Cause there's a lot more that we can do with this. If we want to do some really specific things. Now, as we're working, if we want to not see these dots, we can just click off our point generator under sources and we can still adjust and animate things. So let's talk about some of these additional settings in our object tab, because we can really do a lot of creative and unique things with this. If we offset our fragments, you can see it's just going to scale them down a bit. So if we just wanted to create something where there's pieces and they're kind of smaller and kind of locking together, we could do that. And this one area that I want to focus on where you can really do some unique things is this sort result. Now, if we just check this on and get a pretty standard effector, let's say like random and turn the strength up and down and just check this on and off. You don't really see much difference, but where this comes into play is when there's effectors that are going in a X, Y, Z direction. So instead of that random effector, let's make sure this is highlighted and we're going to go to MoGraph effector step. And this lets you adjust and animate objects sequentially over this curve by that same parameter system of position, scale, rotation. So this is where it's going to be really important. If we adjust this curve, you can see that the objects are scaling and growing and by default, they're just going left to right in our scene. And if we wanted to do the opposite of this, so we can talk about it. Let's go negative. So they're getting smaller at the beginning of this spline when it's zero and then scaling up to where they're uniform. Well, this is where the sort result is pretty important because we might not want it just this direction. We might want it on a different axis. So if we go to sort result, our default is X, but check this out. If we do Y now we could have it kind of scaling and crumbling at the bottom. So if we take the step effector and pull the strength down more, so it's more on a negative, we can see they're going to be scaling down to almost nothing at the bottom. And if we go to Z, they're going to be doing it on the Z axis. So we could have objects breaking apart sequentially if they're getting end of blasted out of existence or something. And if we just wanted them crumbling at the ground, we could put it on Y. And again, we could animate the strength and the curve. And if we go to that Verani fracture, we could invert it. So maybe if we wanted it, you kind of scale and crumble from the top. So let's do that real quick. Let's talk about how we could do that and why that sort result matters. So let's say the strength starts at zero. So we just get our standard cube and we could turn that on and put that keyframe at the beginning. And then we're going to animate that to something like negative a hundred right there. And we can even animate this curve. If we just really want to crush those pieces out of existence. We could animate that spline, go ahead in time and just push them all out of existence. So that's where that sort becomes really important because we might really want to control the direction that it's going in. So there's some basic setup options. If you're just cracking this open for the first time and you want to figure out how it works. Now let's talk about some of those other text animations I had in the beginning, because things get a little more complex and a lot more fun when we're doing things with multiple objects and letters and we can fracture multiple textures as well as animate our fall off and displacement. So we could do things like these two text animations. So let's jump into those project files. Here's the project file for one of those scenes. We can see the text is being fractured along the X axis and then is snapping completely together. And we get this cool fall off. And if we jump out of our camera view and take a close look at this, we can see the materials are on different parts of the caps and bevels and they're breaking correctly and it's holding it together as it should be. And that's when things get a little more complex. So let's talk about the differences with setting that sort of thing up. 
I'll just take this extruded text out of my fracture and same idea, I'll just delete everything. So here we have some extruded text that could be a logo or any spline shapes that we could grab from here or Motex that we could drop in and type out that way. And I have different materials on the caps and bevels. And if you wanna get a quick overview out of how to set this up with the caps, be sure to check out a different video I had talking all about that. It's a pretty quick setup, but it's some specific stuff. So it's really important to understand that. And now we wanna fracture this whole hierarchy and be able to do some fun animation with it. Well, let's do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna go to MoGraph Fracture. I'll hold Alt when I have that whole extrude selected. And we get our similar colors. So we can go to Sources, click that, and let's just do 300 pieces to start. And there we have kind of a preview of how our pieces are gonna break apart. Let's go to Object and turn off Colorized Fragments. And the first problem we can see is we're not seeing all of our materials as we thought we would, even though we saw them a minute ago and we can see them if we turn this off. And if we drop an effector onto this, like we did with our cube, let's go to MoGraph, Effector, Random, and let's just go to Parameters and to really drive home what's not working right, let's move all these positions and change the rotations a bit. And you can see things don't quite look how we would anticipate. We're losing a texture and there's kind of just a bunch of little pieces that don't look like the chunks of the text. Well, if we're doing an extruded object in a hierarchy like this, it's really important on the extrude that we check this create single object. That's gonna take everything that we have with the caps and materials and snap it all together as one object. And now if we turn off that random effector, you can see it looks like it should. And then if we turn on our random object and animate that effector, now you can see there are the big chunks that we would want and it's all working properly and looking nice. Well, let's talk about some cool stuff we can do to really customize this with that fall off that I was showing the example. Right now, if we animate this, let's say it goes from 100 down to zero, it's gonna animate the letters snapping together and that's great, but what if we wanted to go left to right or have a little more control? Well, rather than animating the strength, I'll just undo all that so we don't have any keyframes. We can go to fall off right here and instead of infinite, we could grab a different type of fall off. I like to use the sphere. And now if we press T or get scale, we can scale up our object and that's actually scaling up the size of our fall off evenly. And this is what's gonna move the object. So our effector is contained to this sphere that we can now move around and animate. And we can adjust the scale of our fall off, the size of our fall off, as well as this fall off percentage, which is how smoothly the fall off happens within this sphere. So if it's at zero, you can see it, they're either in the sphere or they're not. And if it's at a hundred, it's gonna be a really smooth fall off. So now all we want have to do if we wanted to animate this is we could grab our random effector and all we gotta do is animate position X. So I'll make a keyframe at the beginning, go ahead in time and just move this past the letters click to make another keyframe and now it's going to animate through there. And if we want to change the speed, we can just change those keyframes. And then we get that cool animation. Now what's awesome about working with the Veronai fracture is it's just like any other MoGraph object. So we could have that effector going on. And on top of that, let's say we want another one. Let's add that step effector and do that scaling thing I was talking about. So I'll add a step effector. I'll go to effector and let's make it negative so you can see it's just cracking those a little so if we do a quick area render you can see in addition to that random effector that's animating with its fall off we can have some cracks going and we could animate this one by just animating the strength so i'll click strength to make a keyframe go ahead to the end of the animation and put it at zero and then just click to make a keyframe so we can have multiple animations going on we can have this spherical fall off animating the letters around. And while that's happening, we can have these cracks closing up, which looks pretty cool. So at the end of the animation, everything comes back together. And then once those effectors are out of the way, it's gonna look seamless and we're not gonna see any of those cracks, even though they're all still there. And if we put our lines on, we can see how it's working. So the Veronai Fracture is one of the coolest updates to Cinema 4D R18. It's one of my favorite features. You can do so much cool stuff with it. 
like these animations here, and I'm really excited to see what everyone can make with this new feature. And if you want to check out more new features for Cinema 4D R18, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net where I have full breakdowns on all of the new features, including my top five new features, MoGraph updates, the new thin film shader, the awesome new Vernoy fracture, and more new features. And don't forget to check out some of the new Cinema 4D products I have in the online store at motiontutorials.net slash store, where you can pick up Cinema 4D templates, lighting and rendering assets, and new packs for 360 Environment Maps Pro, which are packs of 8K environment photos, assets, and a Cinema 4D templates to quickly and easily make your 3D scenes look awesome. If you have any questions on this tutorial or any of my other new feature tutorials, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. I love hearing from fans of the videos and talking about all these new features. And if you want a quick dose of other new features for R18, be sure to check out the other R18 videos I have up on YouTube by clicking on any of those thumbnails that are popping up there now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the next video. Thank you